This is good. This is good. So we have, um, you know, Africa is being represented quite fairly on stage once again. We, we have a Nigerian. We, we have a Ghanaian. We have a Congolese Angolan in the building. Um, so I'm just going to get straight into it. Okay? I'm going to go straight into it. Jidena, a lot of guys didn't know you were African. Yeah? A lot of guys didn't know. From Classic Man, I thought this guy is just, I liked him because, I, like I said, I'm Congolese. A lot of people are not well informed in, in the sapper world, the sapology, you know. Um, a few brands have done commercials based on those guys. You know, we go back to artists like Papa Wemba, Kofi Olomide. The guy was wearing masks in, in his uh, videos, and they were confused. They thought he was Batman, but no, that was sapper. <laughs> now, your African background, how important is it in what you do, in what you are doing now, in what you were doing when you was growing up? Uh, I mean... It's, it's, you, guys, you guys are so polite, yeah. That's so great. You actually silenced them. Bro, it works. It's from Congo. It works. <laughs> <laughs> well, you bring up, um, I suppose, the safe. Um, for me, it was every Even in Classic Man, I try to put hints uh, about the African identity in there. So Ankara fabric, even on the lapels of my jacket at the end, um, we converted the traditional chief hat that we wear to what we call a fezora. So in between a fez and a fedora. And I'm wearing that in the video at the end. Yeah. Janelle Monet crowns me. Shout out to Janelle. <laughs> yeah. She's doing big things now. Um, so, I mean, it's everything. I, I grew up in Enugu, Nigeria. So, hey. Now, wow. We're about we to Enugu, Enugu is in the building, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's from Lagos. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Bushman now. Chairman, don't turn YouTube into I'm Nollywood. A bushman. Not today. <laughs> Not today, Jiden. I keep it classic. <laughs> um, but it's the foundation of my perspective. If you're in a place where you learn to walk, talk, and the music, of course, and the high life sounds that then have influenced Afro beats across the African diaspora, that's everything for, for me, you know? And um, so I think it's the foundation of, of, of everything that I do, how I see the world, and um, what I want to see in the world. As I'm wearing this hat, influenced by uh, some loser that's the president of my country right now, or one of my countries, um, I converted it thanks to my guy um, uh, who's, who has this amazing album called Afro Bang. My, my guy Khalid uh, is Make Africa Great Again. And that's, that's, to me, what's more important for us. So everything from the foundation to where we're going is, is a part of the African identity. Um, Yuji, you grew up in London. We want to know that, so because there are some people who say you grew up in London, I want to know the facts. Where did you grow up? Um, what kind of sounds were you listening to? Yeah, so um, a lot of people don't actually know I was born in Ghana. Um, and I, came, yeah, I, I was born in Accra, dance man. And <laughs> I came here when I was about seven years old. So by the time I was already here, I was fresh. Like, you can't take the fresh out of me. Um, you can't. There's no matter what. This guy, he's so fresh, you, he'll you, never expire. The only thing I think that changed was, was my, my accent. My mom said I lost that in about two weeks. But every, <laughs> everything else I do is fresh. I still wake up and eat Ken Kato today. Su Super Mo is my water. Do you get know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, so I, I, was, I was born in Ghana. I came here when I was seven. And you know, my mom and dad are pastors. They have a church. That's why my whole family sing and stuff. So um, the music has always been in us. Even if we didn't want to, my brothers and I play the keyboard, the drums, and the bass guitar for church. Um, we also sing as part of the choir. And you know, they don't sing the American-type gospel sing songs. They sing the African. Yeah. We are saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, huh? So, <laughs> so that, 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 those sounds are, they're rooted. No matter what, it's not coming wow. out. So yeah, bro. <laughs> Well, the Jews about to give you go on the mountain. Let's not get it. My brother, God knows you love him. God knows you love him. This is YouTube now. Jesus is here already. <laughs> hey, shame. You probably want me to start shending that about shame that here. The reason why I'm asking you guys these questions about your foundation is very, very important. We, you know, one of the questions we ended with the last conversation we had here with Banky, Jules, and Smade was how do we maintain our sound, how do we maintain our culture, at the same time also fuse it with other sounds. You know, uh, Young Bane, you know, you are 
uh, currently amongst you know the, the the new crop of musicians where there is a little I'm not I don't know if it's a debate I don't know if it's something that you're even aware of where everyone's kind of trying to label this a genre yeah you work with G Fresh G Fresh in the building one of our prominent UK artists as well who you work with and he said to me it's just all about you know just uh, fusing the, the 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 genres it's not all and the young Africans coming together and teaching each other about the culture some people are saying the sound that you make alongside the culture funds and the J Husses Afro sing Afro wave Afro ketchup what is it <laughs> What, what, like, what, what do you think from what was your influence? What got you into this stage for people to be able to discuss your sound? Check, check. Yeah, we're in the building. Um, um, personally, I don't like to put myself in the genre. You see, I, um, I just go to the studio, listen to the music and speak on my life. So the influences that come from the music will be obviously what I was listening to when I was younger and what I listen to now. And... Um, heavily influenced by being African. Like you, you're Congolese yourself, and you know a lot of second generation. We don't speak Lingala. But I do, and so do I. But yeah, um, yeah going to so leave. they're going to leave. <laughs> Let's come back to London. So yeah, that was a choice that I made myself to be able to learn my native language because I wanted to understand my culture. I wanted to understand where I've come from because I'm proud of it. So yeah, so now when I go to the studio, you will hear some African sounds. You'll hear some African instruments and some melodies as well, of course. But that's only because I'm just being who I am and I'm proud of that. So yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, in the States, Jadena. I've, you know, I've been to America quite a few times this year, and um, I've hosted a few Afrobeats concerts, Mr. Easy, Malik mm -hmm. Berry, and we did yep. the South by Southwest in Texas. Yep. And they're really excited about the African sound. Like, yeah. I feel like in the UK, we're, we're, we're excited, you know, but we've, had, we've been fed with it over the years, so we're kind of used to it now. Yeah, but yeah. in the state, it's like, as soon as you go, ah, they finished, new, yeah. you know? Um, how did that start? How did that happen? You know, why did it take so long for America to grow up? Because you have a lot of Africans in the States. It's still going, though. It's still going. I, I'll be honest, man. I, I think that um, you can still go up to places and people don't know who WizKid is. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not at the point where everybody knows who the top like Afrobeats artists are. It's not there yet. Um, I think it's a different culture in America, yo. Uh, like for example, in Europe, yo, if you go a certain amount of X amount of kilometers west, you're gonna run into another country. If you're in the U.S., you go X amount of kilometers west or X amount of miles, you're in the same country, and nobody knows any language except English. You know what I'm saying? So because of that, I think, and, and everybody thinks in terms of color and not in terms of where you're from. Like, we're here talking about where we're from, right? The countries we're from. You're, you're like black in America. As soon as you come there, you're black. Nobody cares. Like, Congo, who cares? Like, that doesn't mean anything. You're white, even white. I start. I stop calling white people white. They're European Americans. Okay. If I, if, if African Americans are African Americans, <laughs> then white people are European Americans. It's more accurate. And and, and the reason is because it, to me, I want I want a country in the U.S. that actually resembles some things I see here, where it's it's more important where you're from. You can still preserve your identity, uh, but but blend it with the U.K. vibe out here. So. That's what I would like to see. I don't know if it'll happen, uh, but I think that's why it's taken long for Afrobeats to, to to connect, and it's still it's still it's still happening. But we have our first Afrobeats radio station um, just outside of Chicago okay. now, first one in the country. Proper. Yeah, and I went there to kind of launch Wonderful. launch that. Yeah. What's the do you, do you know the, do you remember the name? I don't know if you remember. No, I don't. We'll remember. call it the first ever Afrobeats FM until yeah, we. Yeah. <laughs> Until we get yeah, the name. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, in the States, it's like KLH. Yeah, I exactly. don't know all these letters. No. IFM and yeah. FM. <laughs> it, it could be that. Um, you, you know, Yuji, I love producers. Uh, we had a conversation. Uh, uh, a gentleman earlier brought up this conversation. What's up? We, oh, you had the, No, 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 no. Cheman, Cheman. Let me land in now. <laughs> I... <laughs> I was talking about, um, you know, a gentleman <laughs> from me off, no, my brother. A gentleman who mentioned the fact that, you know, um, why do we not involve uh, instrumentalists as much, traditional 
instrumentalist um, in, in, in the early stages of producing music, right? I'm a big fan of producers. I've sat um, in, in places like one of my favorite producers in the world is Kill Beats, who works alongside Fuse ODG. He's one of the prominent Afrobeat artists from the UK. So uh, do you play around with live instruments? Do you guys feel that it's important to have, you know, the, the live instrument elements, um, you know, in the studio as it's happening? And what are the restrictions, though? in terms of the happening? Um, so like my dad is a really big fan of mine, but he doesn't buy into the electronics. Like he doesn't believe, he feels we don't make real music because we jump on logic and input the music. For him, he feels like the, the, the real sound always comes from the live instruments. The only thing is nowadays, um, life is so fast paced. Do you know what I mean? So instead of you going to go and collect four people who come and play different drums, you have one producer that can put all of it into one, you're just sitting there. So that's the sad, the sad thing about it, but times change, unfortunately. The only good thing about it is, I think, when you do live, no matter what you do, um, it's always nice to bring that side of it back into it again, um, to give it that authentic feel. Um, but yeah, time, times have changed, man, times have changed. Bain, what about yourself? You know, being from a Congolese background, live music is the basis of, 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 of everything. Yeah. You know, is that something that you feel you still want to get involved yeah. in? Do you think it's really important? Yeah, but um, even with the stuff coming out, yeah. I've tried to, so like I've worked really closely with um, Team Salute okay. and we've incorporated. Big shout out to Team Salute. Yeah, big shout out to Team Salute who are proper pushing the African scene as well, taking it to places. But um, yeah, we've tried to incorporate instruments as well. And where I used to play the piano was also. I'm trying to get back into that. Hey, babe, that one you just slipped in there, Loki. Uh, Loki for, by the way, for Valentine's Day. By the <laughs> way, <You say? laughs> let me. <laughs> <laughs> let no, me, that's great, that's great. Let me touch on that because there's one producer, actually one of my favorite producers in the building right now who actually does incorporate live instruments and whether by sample or by recording, that's Jules right there. Yeah. This, Shout this to guy, Jules. man. He does it, man. So so it's important to recognize people like him because it's it actually shapes what we do. It shapes how we sing, how we rap, right? Um, it changes the vibe. It makes us actually touch a different part of ourselves. It's not just the hips, you know what I'm saying, but it's, it's our heart too. When you have that live sound, that's what it does. And I, and I think it's important for us to reach um, back to like the 60s, 70s. To me, in general, whether the States, UK, or all of the African continent, including Zimbabwe, Thomas Mafumo, and Tukutsi, yeah. Yes, like these people, it's not like just fell out. Like I'm Niger boy to the core, but like we have so many people, man. Like Mariam Makeba, like these are everywhere in the continent. Sali, like uh, uh, Ali Farka Toure, like everywhere from Mali all the way down Absolutely. to South Africa, Morocco. Absolutely. This is like the sacred music from, and it, some of it was pop music in the time. And I think as we continue to journey, like it's still a young sound that's being developed. As we continue the journey, we'll have more combination between the electronics and the live. You guys are so polite here, yo. Yeah, well, listen, in so America, uh, everybody be talking anyway. Like, yeah, listen, I'm all right with even, the people talking in the back. No, I'm not all right with it. Yeah, we're usually, usually better than this, because this doesn't happen every every day. You know, this is Christmas right They're now. They're drinking so, now. They're, uh, fine they are not wine. drinking, my brother. Fine They're wine. Here, yeah. um, <laughs> so um, we're going to get to some questions uh, uh, soon. Uh, so, it, in terms of... You know, the future, yeah? Um, like, again, I think that's important. For me, it's not just about us, you know, being here today on the YouTube platform and, you know, YouTube space and, you know, ADTV talking about this and tomorrow is gone, you know? You've grown up in the US. These two have grown up in the UK. Um, Africa is home. We're always getting that inspiration from back home. We've been as well, of course, you know, your sound, you're, you're, you're in rap, you're in, in hip-hop as well. So it's not just about Africa. But just in general, how do we, as artists, as producers, as uh, record label execs, tour managers, curators, be role models to the next generation. Because music teaches, culture teaches, language teaches, the food, you know, teaches politeness as well. <laughs> what, did I think out loud there? So how important do you see yourselves as artists being role models for our community? Because a lot of kids are listening to you guys. They love your sound. She says she wants to take me away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then they see you, then they want to yeah. watch how you've been taken away. How important is it for us as role models? Well, Talk to I know he's always, he's always on to me. He's always that's my little, on to that's me. That's my little brother, man. We have a deal. <laughs> I have to get on to him. Yeah. 
But um, that's something that I've been speaking to G about as well quite a lot. Like, you've got to be very careful with the message that you're delivering because there's a lot more people watching. Like, if you get a million views today, it happens so quick. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a big song, but the fact that it's happening so quick, you know everybody's listening. So once you know the people are listening and I'm seeing little kids DMing me on Instagram, I've got to be very careful with the message I'm delivering and the images you post. So I think we have a big responsibility today, especially being a young teenager as well, because they'll feel more relatable to me, especially because I'm young. So I've got to be very careful, and so do my peers as well. Great stuff. Thank you, young man. You clap for him. Now why not? He deserves a clap. Yes, sir. I mean, I think also, though, that we... Um, and I see this in the grime scene, actually, here. We have a responsibility to speak truth to power. You know, as, as somebody, a foreigner to hear, when I hear about grime shows being shut down left and right, yo, it kills me, yo. Um, it kills me, but also at the same time, I respect grime artists that much more, like everybody. Avelino, Wretch, like all the way up to the top, like the Stormzy's of the world. It, it's, it's great to see people, people rise and cross that river in the midst of uh, the, the, honestly, the oppressive forces that are shutting people down yeah. from grime, even an Afrobeats artist, yo. Yes. So I think that um, when we talk about role models, it's not about just being like polite and very, uh, you know, like this. It, it's, about, it's also about uh, being very principled about who we are and being like, we're here now. And you have to recognize it, and you can't shut us down everywhere we go. That's, that's important for the, for the future generation because when we go back home, we can't all act all polite with the leaders that are running these governments right now, man, across Africa, man. There's not, there's not a place to be polite. So I think that, that when we talk about the future of this, how we preserve it, those are the principles we must live by, as well as the fact that we can't, just as artists think that we're going to be worldwide forever, unless we control pieces of the media. That's the important thing. You think this, you, you know what happened at the, to dance hall in the US, man? It came and went, and it comes in waves. I me, mean, I see this, this wave right now. The only way that you turn the wave into a tsunami that comes every season is by controlling the media and the outlets of the music. Yes. And even shows like this, with having YouTube, you know, uh, s supporting this conversation is important. But we have to be in those positions of power. And that's the only way that we'll preserve it long term. Positions of power. You don't know, you don't think of getting into politics to just sort out these issues. <laughs> is it, is it, was it Fela, the, 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 the original Afro Beats? Yes. Before Absolutely. Afro Beats. And he had a great so message. So that's, that's, that's the thing. It was, he was politics and party all day. Yuji. No, you can clap. You can always clap when you feel it. It's, it's, not, a it's not a problem at all. Um, Yuji, so in live performance, um, you guys are now with Afrobeats. You're not just, you know, uh, performing in the UK. We've got the One African Fest, of course, on uh, Saturday at Wembley Arena. You know, big shout out to the guys who are here representing. Jiden is going to be performing there as well. Um, so you guys, you know, you're performing all around the world. And, and it's not just, you know, based on the fact that you've got YouTube views. It's based on the fact that you have fans around the world requesting this thing. We've got the, the iTunes um, of this world as well. But your sound, did you ever think you'll be able to go to like a Dubai and people just feel your music? Because it's not about a community anymore. You know, it's, it's a global community now. It's not local. And then you go to Africa, you're in Ghana or Nigeria, and they're feeling your music and they can connect with you. That's the power of music. How does it make you feel? Um, it, it's crazy. The, the thing about it is people don't know how powerful like, our minds are. You know, in my head, I had already blown in music when I was 15. <laughs> I, I, I promise you guys. In my head, I knew this was going to happen. What I had to work on was how I was going to get here and make this, do you know what I mean, and get myself to this position. My, my family called me crazy. They loved me, but they called me crazy. My own brothers called me crazy. But I knew where I was working towards, what I was going to. So to say I thought I'd be here and be able to sing to people in like Sweden that would sing back to me, I never guessed that. But there was no limits to what I, I, I believed we could achieve or what I could achieve. Um, and that's what's brought me here. Fantastic. Fantastic. You want to add to that, Bain? You want to add to that? You want to respond to that question as well? You was in Dubai recently. It looked good. Yeah, yeah, it was and a good experience. And then you went to Sweden two days later. Yeah. It looked good. Yeah. <laughs> so how was that experience? Um, yeah, it was crazy. I mean, Sweden, we went to 
we went to Gothenburg, yeah, Gothenburg. And it was um it was a good turn that it wasn't just ourselves, Africans as well. And then obviously when I went to Dubai, I was very nervous. I was not expecting anyone to sing back. Chairman, my brother, one second. Okay, we've got people helping us today and now as well. <laughs> yeah. And then um, when we landed in Dubai, I think that was the first time I was like really, really nervous before going on stage. And then I hit the stage and then when I could hear everyone singing back, it was just crazy. So yeah, man, it's good, man. It's wonderful. That, that takes me on to that question about, you know, our sound crossing over to different cultures, getting our music. I mean, for years, I, I had this one thing, I was on Twitter one day and um, I think uh, an, an artist, someone who's, uh, I think it was a white artist and they, they wrote something in, in, in tree. Ed Sheeran for Fuse ODG. He, he, promoted, he promoted his song. He wrote something in Tree. Of course, they've got a song together. And everyone were excited, right? Oh, my God, he spoke Tree. Oh, my God, Ed spoke Tree. Oh, we're going to die today. And I thought, Tree is not that hard to learn. We had to learn English. Like, relax. You understand? But it's like, how do we make sure that our sound does cross over? But without us thinking, like, you know, we have to be grateful every time people get us. Because Africa has been around. It's A, A, before A, Africa. You understand? So Africa has been around for a long time. So sometimes I find it frustrating that we always have to be, you know, um, humbled whenever our, our sound crosses up or someone is singing, on the premier gawu, nepa gawu, and you're like, but you're not African. So how important is it to make sure that we maintain our music, we're, we're, we're gracious about it, but also we don't try to compromise too much that people have to get it. Is there an Afrobeats award show? Good question. I'm asking as we've a, had, I'm, I'm ignorant, so I don't know if you have is one. Is there an Af in the UK? Yeah. Uh, we've had a few. Yeah. We've had a few, but um, uh, wait, I, I can, yes. That's what we've had a few attempts. But here's the thing, I don't know it. Yes. There and you I go. should. You should. And, that, and I think that that's the thing. We have to be the mark of our success, yo. It's not like, I'm not waiting for anybody. Yeah, it's a, that's not how you got here, you got here, you got here, I got here. We didn't wait for anybody. So I think that that's, that's important. We had this conversation about the Grammys. Um, you know, thank God for my homie Chance the Rapper for taking home three. You know, but, you know, that's a whole conversation in the States as well. Yeah, and really worldwide with the Grammys. You know, like, oh, you, you won a Grammy, but who, who is really certifying your greatness? We have to certify it before others do. We have to put people up. And you know, I was with Burner Boy in the state, uh, in New York, like two days ago. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I don't know if he wants me to tell, tell the story, but I mean, it's Release, Burner, my brother. What, uh, his name is Burner Boy. We're celebrating after the show. Let me say it that way. You know what I'm saying we're celebrating with Burner <laughs> Boy in a club in like Times Square. And I was like, you know, we we got kicked out of a couple clubs, you know what I'm saying? Me and him. But that's because partially they don't, you know, everybody knows, like, yo, this burner boy, he should be treated like royalty, you know? And with enough people around, uh, he will be. And by certifying, yo, this guy can be treated like the, the ditties of, of the states and, you know, Kanye's, the Drake's, where you can burn a boy uh, in a club and not be kicked out. I think it's important. The only way that works is if the African diaspora, not just Africans on the continent, but here, the states, wherever, Belgium, can certify that person and be like, yo, this, this person. So I think it's important that we do that, not just in music, but all across industry.